Hi everyone, my name is Peter Faria and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to dynamically read the last file inside of a folder. So, what we have is a folder contained, as of right now, one specific file called January Sales, as we can see over here. What I'm going to do is, using the directory tool, as I drag it in, I'm going to reference that specific folder, and I'm going to read all of that. So as I read this specific folder, notice how I'm not specifying any file types. If I want it, I can just change the asterisk for the specific file extension or for a name of the file. And because the one specific folder only contains one file, as you can see, we are able to see the information for the one file right over here. But what else can we see? We do have a column called creation time, less access time, less write time, and other columns. So we can use any of these columns over here to create our logic. So what we can do is using directory tool, what I'm gonna do is then load this specific file into Altrix using what we call a batch macro. We have covered how to build this specific batch macro before. So go ahead and watch the one video but what we're going to be doing is then dragging it in into Altrix. We're going to connect our input into it. I'm going to select the full path. And I'm going to browse afterwards. As I do this and I run the workflow, we are able to, of course, open up the file as you can see right over here. Beautiful. So what comes next? What if we had a new file, but then we had built out this logic, but we don't actually want to keep manually updating it. What we can do is then create a dynamic logic. So what I'm going to do is now add a brand new file called February sales right over here. As you can see, now we have February sales. What I'm going to do is then prior to actually inputting the file, using our batch macro right over here. We're going to be manually creating the dynamic logic. So let me show you how we're going to be doing this. You notice how we have the creation time. If I run the workflow again, it means that a new file will show up over here as our second row. So what we can do is create a logic to load all of them up using what we have right here. And then we can sort any of these calls over here based on what we believe is the best method to then get the latest file into the first row and then remove all the rest and only keep the first row or you can do the opposite it doesn't really matter let me show you how we're going to be doing this after the directory tool i'm going to drag it in a sort tool right over here i'm going to sort my creation time on the descending order and then I'm going to be using my sample tool to extract the first row. As I do this and I run the workflow, notice how we're now inputting two files. The creation time is slightly different by a couple of seconds, as you can see over here. Or we could have used what? A less access time which may be giving us the best method. It doesn't really matter. Just find whichever column works best for you. In our case, the creation time worked for us, but at the same time, you can see the last exit time would work for us either way. Then when we drag it in, after we drag it in the sort tool, we can see that February is actually the file that was last created. And then using the sample tool, I'm removing all the rest and only keeping February, and then I'm loading the data afterwards. Now, what we can do is drag it in a new file. So let's drag it in 
March sales right over here. I can, for example, then just so I can show you, I can change instead of using creation time, I can use less access time. And notice how now that I run the workflow, we have three files coming in. I'm updating them by less access time. As you can see, now March does become the first file. I'm removing all the rest and then I'm loading them again. So this is how you can dynamically read the last file using the directory tool and a combination of either a batch macro, what we covered right now, or there is a different method called using the dynamic input as well. They're gonna work the same way pretty much, but either way, it's gonna give you exactly what you're looking for. So this does wrap up today's session. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.